Tyndall was hit by Hurricane Michael in the fall of 2018. After that, there is discussion as to whether or not it was worth rebuilding Tyndall, um, if Tyndall's specific missions could be uh, hosted at another installation. And what came out of that was a determination that um, Tyndall's missions were specific to Tyndall and that Tyndall needed to rebuild. The rebuild of Tyndall really is driven by the necessity of the base for the Greater Air Force. It has airspace that allows for the Department of Defense to come and do training of pilots. It's, it's airspace that's uncontested by civilian aircraft, so it allows for a wider range of capabilities that you just don't find at other bases. So with the amount of destruction that happened on the base from the hurricane, it gave the base an opportunity to reevaluate how all of the facilities are laid out on the base and how they interact with one another. Senior leaders tasked uh, Tyndall to not only rebuild as, as the base that it was, but the base of the future. Out of that was, okay, discussion into what do those buildings look like, what technology is outfitting those buildings, that clean slate um, allows us to do a, a whole lot in kind of changing the policy and driving the innovation into Tyndall. So with uh, the base being the installation of the future, you can kind of expect a more thought out plan for where everything is placed on base. It's a process, so obviously we had a team of planners that had to figure out, you know, where, where the new buildings are going to be put. And the easiest solution is to stop all missions on Tyndall and just focus for the next five seven years and rebuild, but that can't happen. What basically that boils down to is planning and scheduling out when demo is going to occur, when construction is going to occur, and making sure that those don't conflict with any operations that we have. 